With the world on lockdown, it's been the perfect time to binge watch Netflix, catching up on your favourite shows, from Tiger King to the Big Show Show. Okay, maybe it's not the latter, but what about Sun Until I Die? The second series of the heart-wrenching documentary came out the other week, detailing Sun's demise. Series 1 saw the club relegate from the championship, while Season 2 detailed their failures in League 1 under new ownership. But where are the stars of the show now? And by stars, I mean players and club officials. Not, I'm not bothered about what the taxi driver's doing. Simon Grayson, unemployed. The first man in charge of the Black Cats during the Netflix era, Grayson replaced David Moyes following the club's relegation to the championship. He had a tough job, tasked with taking a basket case club in tatters back to the top division, whilst also dealing with financial turmoil and massive amounts of player turnover. Despite a decent start in the opening few games, things turned sour for Grayson who was sacked in October 2017. After his departure, he would take another risk and manage Bradford between February and May of 2018, ending the League One season in 11th place. His next destination was Blackpool, another club who has been in turmoil in recent years. He was sacked in February 2020 and was unable to get another job before football was put on hold. Chris Coleman, unemployed. Despite being in the championship, Sunderland made a pretty high profile appointment following Grayson's sacking, bringing Chris Coleman to the stadium of light. This is the same man who had taken Wales to the semi-finals of the Euros just two years earlier. He certainly had the charm for the cameras, and one of my favourite bits of Sun until I die season 1 was when he managed to duck the Secret Santa early after his arrival. Sadly for him, results didn't come on the pitch, and January was rough with no money to spend on players by their owner Ellis Short. Coleman couldn't turn things around and Sunderland were relegated, with cameras catching Coleman clashing with a supporter who held ridiculous abuse at him. Coleman was sacked following relegation and a change of ownership before testing himself in the Chinese Super League with Hebei China Fortune. He lasted just less than a year in the Far East though, unable to get a tune out of superstars such as Javier Mascherano. In 2020, he's yet to return to management. Johnny Williams, Charlton Athletic A feature part of Season 1, Johnny Williams joined Sunderland on loan in 2017 and would get the chance to work with his favourite manager Chris Coleman. During the first season, Williams was filmed talking to a sports psychologist where he discussed a lack of confidence in Chris Coleman's ability to get the best out of him. Williams would return in Season 2, but in a different shirt. The Welshman fielder joined Charlton in 2019 from Crystal Palace and featured in the club's playoff final win over the Black Cats, a real low moment in Sun Until I Die Season 2. Now in the Championship, Williams has played 19 times for Charlton and recorded 5 assists this season. George Honeyman, Hull City a shining light of season 1 before being named captain of the club in season 2, George Honeyman came across quite well on the Netflix series, just a young local lad living his dream during terrible times. But once the cameras disappeared and Sunderland were destined for another season of League One football, Honeyman was on the move. In August 2019, the club sold their captain to Hull City as they looked to raise funds, meaning the young midfielder would get another chance in the championship, albeit another club who have had severe problems behind the scenes. Lugo 9, still at Sunderland. Other than the fans, no one came out of Sun Until I Die Season 2 looking better than Luke 9. The midfielder signed in the summer of 2018 from Wickham, and he just came across really well in the Netflix series. A lad who works hard, wants to get better, doesn't buy into the hype of being a footballer like some do, and wants to help people by doing things in the community. 09 is still with the Black Cats, and is currently doing online workouts. A bit like Joe Wicks, but without the mass publicity and broken hand. Martin Bain, CEO of FSDL. The villain of season 1, Martin Bain came out looking like an absolute pillock to be honest. It was almost like a vanity project for Bain, who flashed a new watch every time he was on the camera, which was far too often. He wasn't seen in season 2 but his name was mentioned, listed as the only person using the ridiculously expensive cryo chamber, further epitomising Sonnen's financial mismanagement. Basically Bain seemed to just use the club as a bloody spa. His contract was terminated in the summer of 2019 following the change of ownership, but amazingly he's still in football. Bain is currently the CEO of FSDL, who organised the Indian Super League. Aidan McGeady, on loan at Charlton McGeady was a curious figure in Season 1, seemingly quiet until he called youth players a bunch of gimps for throwing snowballs then criticised manager Chris Coleman for basically not being very good. He was more prominent in Season 2, and was billed as their only real hope during the crunch playoff games. Of course, McGeady couldn't do it all on his own, and he's since left the Stadium of Light. The winger is currently on loan at Charlton Athletic, likely to never play for the Black Cats ever again. Lewis Graben, Nottingham Forest A key figure in the first half of Season 1, Lewis Graben was Sunderland's only real hope in the Championship. Despite woeful performances, Graben couldn't stop scoring in red and white, but come January he decided he wanted to leave. Coleman granted his departure, something McGeady wasn't happy about, and Graben would go on to join Aston Villa and win the Golden Boot. 
Crabbin had no remorse about leaving Sunland in the lurch, and to be honest, came across as a little bit of a dick. Yet again, he's one of the championship's top scorers, now with Nottingham Forest, where he's aiming to win promotion at the top flight at the city ground. Jack Rodwell, Sheffield United. Another villain from season one, the saga of Jack Rodwell was a hard watch. Not from Rodwell's perspective though, he just came across as a selfish footballer, especially when he claimed there was no chance he would play. He then wouldn't leave the club in January, happy to collect his ludicrous wage whilst the club stared financial oblivion in the face. He would eventually leave being released in the summer of 2018. He would then play for Blackburn for a year and is now incredibly in the Premier League with Sheffield United, although he hasn't played a single minute in the top flight and his contract expires this summer. Darren Gibson, Salford City An outspoken player in the first season, Gibson was caught on camera slagging off teammates whilst on the piss, which wasn't really a good look at all. In March 2018, Gibson was charged with drink driving. He was suspended by the club and subsequently released, joining Wigan in August 2018. Nowadays, Gibson is on a short-term contract with League 2 side Salford City. Lee Catamol VVV Venlo Despite double relegations, Lee Catamol was loyal to Sunderland and a fan favourite because of his dedication. He didn't do a lot of interviews during the series, but his name was mentioned by owner Stuart Donner as a player who would be difficult to move on. That was indeed true, and Catamol remained with the club in League 1. Sadly for him, he was the unfortunate man who missed the decisive penalty at Wembley in the JPT final against Portsmouth. He's now left Sunderland though, taking his career to the Netherlands with VVV Venlo. Stuart Donald, Sunderland owner Donald arrived on the scene in the summer of 2018, purchasing the club from Ellis Short. He immediately looked to improve the club's public image, engaging with fans like never before. And as you can see on Sunderland Till I Die, his art seemed to be in the right place. But the series ended with talk of Donald possibly selling the club, and that's where we are right now. He's still a Sunderland owner, but there was a fan campaign before Christmas stating that they wanted Donald out of the club, which interestingly saw an upturn in form on the pitch. However, fans are yet to get their wish, and Donald is still in charge at Sunderland. Juan Sartori, Sunderland shareholder and senator in Uruguay. A figure you often saw in the background of season 2, Juan Sartori is a shareholder at Sunderland, owning 20% of the club. He's still a director there, but it's also into his politics back in his native Uruguay, where he was recently elected as a senator, whatever that means. Jack Ross Hibernian You could tell that Jack Ross didn't really want to be on camera. Clearly he's an Amazon Prime man, not Netflix. But he was Donald's first appointment, taking over from Chris Coleman in the summer of 2018. He narrowly missed out on promotion and a trophy, but has since left the Stadium of Light, getting the sack in October 2019. Was he harshly treated? On the one hand, he drew far too many games, but on the other, his side were hard to beat. But either way, he's gone now, and is currently the manager of Hibernian back in Scotland. Josh Madger, Bordeaux The big story in the first half of Season 2, Josh Madger was the difference between going up or staying in League 1. Sadly, a contract saga forced the Black Cats to cash in in January 2019. Agent Power took over, with Madger rejecting multiple contracts from Sunderland. It was a great insight into how younger players can be influenced by money nowadays, but that didn't help Sunderland, who had to sell them to Bordeaux, and in the end they didn't actually get any money from because they owed Bordeaux money already. The strike is doing okay, having scored 6 goals this season in France. Will Griggs still at Sunderland When Josh Madger left, Sunderland needed a replacement striker. Well at least that's what Donald said, who you could see nearing a breakdown trying to sign Will Griggs on transfer deadline day 2019, despite manager Jack Ross telling him not to overspend. Donald ignored all advice and really splashed out on Grigg, taking a huge risk that massively backfired. Grigg didn't get the goals to get Sunderland where they needed to be, and unfortunately for everyone, he's still at the club, scoring just one goal all season and barely featuring since Phil Parkinson took over. And finally, Charlie Methven. The star of season two, Charlie Methven wasn't as detestable as Martin Bain, but he certainly didn't cover himself in glory either. I mean, the scene when he was talking about changing the walkout music absolutely crippled me. It was like watching something from The Office. And he didn't speak to that last very nicely when he was sorting out the attendance thing either. However, in December 2019, Methven walked away from the club while still retaining a 6% share. No longer a director, he's back down south now, returning to his public relations company. So that's where some of the stars of Sun Until I Die are now. Let us know what you think in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to HITC Sport. And until next time, we'll see you around.